We've done it. The last real chapter of the Ray Tracer Challenge, Constructive Solid Geometry. As usual, we start with our unit test class. At this point in the book, the author assumes you have things down pretty well and won't be discussing the obvious. We need to create a new class called CSG, which will take different operations such as union, intersection, and difference to decide what intersections to reject or accept. A CSG object has a left and a right side, which are both ray objects. To make compound objects, we're going to need to make a CSG object at each step and combine that with the previous step to make a sort of tree hierarchy of commands. With object creation tested, we move into the rules of how CSG objects behave. The first is the union of two objects, which means combining them together. However, unlike a group, the overlapping internal structure of the object is culled away. These tests are a bit more complex than the previous ones, so it takes me a little back and forth to decipher exactly what's going on. The book presents a large truth table to test against, and setting that up is probably half the struggle of the chapter. The method intersection allowed is going to return true or false based on the operation type and the parameters provided to determine if the intersection is valid. Remember, in some cases we want to keep intersections such as those on the outside of the union, but discard those on the interior. The next two tests are copy and paste of the code with the operations in the true and false tables slightly changed. Here, intersection and difference are added as operations. Now that we can determine if an intersection should be kept or thrown away, a method called filter intersections is created to handle the intersections and return the correct list. This test took a little deciphering to understand. Since the book doesn't directly indicate the types of anything, you kind of have to look at it for a little bit and figure out what's going on. Now here's the part you have to implement all by yourself. The ability to search through your hierarchy to find a particular object. To implement this, I add a new method called includes to the parent ray object class. It tests if the current object is the object being searched for and returns true if it is. If it's not the right object, it will then iterate over all of its child objects, calling their includes as well. Nothing actually wrong with my code here, I just messed up the unit test. Time to test intersection misses and hits. The CSG object doesn't perform any actual intersection work. It'll pass on the intersection check to the two child objects, collecting the intersections, sorting them, and then returning them for processing.
Here's a mistake. Notice that I'm multiplying by the matrix. You'll see this affect things soon. For the final section, the book leaves it up to you to create some interesting objects. I decide to do the lenses as an easy example, and then dice, since it requires so many compound CSG objects to create. The lens is just two spheres intersecting one another. The die, on the other hand, is far more complex. It starts as a simple cube. I then create a group for each side of the face that will have a collection of spheres that will be subtracted from the cube surface. Each face needs between one and six spheres, each carefully placed. The first CSG object is the cube and the side with one dot. Then every additional side is combined with the previous CSG object to create another CSG object until there are a total of six. Not difficult, just a whole lot of typing and positioning. It's time for the first test of the die. Well, it would be the first test if I had implemented the get local bounds method of the CSG object. Since they are basically like groups, I just create a zero bounds object. There's the front of the die, and everything looks right so far. Let's rotate it and see it from the side. Little mistake there, did you see it? Going to cause me some problems from here on out. Well, that isn't right. I can tell what's happening with the dots on the side. I'm worrying that the complex grouping of multiple objects might be to blame. Let's investigate. I test things out with the simple lens and things seem to work fine. Back to that die. I add a second light to see if I can better understand what's happening, but nope, doesn't really help. I'm worried my bounds are screwy, so I make them much larger than the object will ever be to exclude it from the problem, but everything renders the same. And then I see it. I am multiplying by the matrix when I should really be multiplying by the inverse. Much better. But something's still wrong with those sides. There it is, a simple mistake. I transform the wrong group. Now things are looking almost perfect. Just need to make those spheres a little smaller. I throw everything into a function so that I can create two dice side by side. And that's it. The end of the chapter. The end of the book. Yes, there's another chapter that gives you suggestions on where to go from here, but for us, in this series, we're done. 
This book took much longer than I expected to get through, and there were a few times I thought I wasn't going to finish it. Particularly that chapter 9, which is why there were so many videos on it. In all, it's a good book. I'd say the biggest thing I'll take away from it is the power of unit testing and how important it is when working on such a large-scale project. Without it, a few of those chapters that required refactoring would have ended this entire thing for me. Personally, it helped reinforce a lot of theory, and it really got my hands dirty implementing it making sure it actually works. This is certainly not a book for a beginner. You need experience to keep you from walking away when things really don't work, and that happens a lot. I certainly would tell everyone to give it a try if you're in the CG business, or maybe if you need a reason to understand why vectors and matrices are so damn important to understand. I don't usually have a closure for series, things just sort of stop, but here we are at the end. So long and goodbye.